Okay, let's get started. Last week, I asked a question on the Facebook page asking, what are some of your problems with growing your business? What are some of the challenges that you face? Probably one of the most common ones that I hear is hosting parties or classes, how to get attendance to these classes, and finding people to host oil classes or parties. So many times people want to know, what am I doing wrong? How do I become a better host? How do I get more people to my classes and so on? Let's dive in and let's talk a bit about that today. Okay, so the first thing that I want to say on hosting is master becoming a host. Be the best host that you can be before you worry about finding other hosts. Now, this seems crazy and it seems like a weird idea, but you really want to be the expert. You want to be the best of the best when it comes to giving an oil presentation, to holding an oil class or party. You want to be that best host. So become the master before worrying so much about finding other people to host parties. Okay, one of the biggest things that I talk about with my team is it's so much more than just actually holding a class or a presentation. You need to be prepared. So the preparation is a huge part of what makes these presentations and classes a success. So create a party plan, kind of like the marketing plan that we talked about. You're going to create a plan for each class and presentation that you do. You're going to write out on a piece of paper all of the details of this party or class, okay? You're going to set a date. Find a date that works for you, find a date that works for people on your team, come up with a few options and then solidify which date works best. Decide on a theme. Are you going to do an intro class about oils? Are you going to do a class on the premium starter kit? Are you going to do a class on Ningxia Red? Thieves, whatever it may be, decide on a theme. This could be a DIY class. This could be a pamper yourself class. I mean, there's so many different themes. Be creative. Have fun. You know, maybe do a Halloween oil class or oils and fall food. Get creative. Make it a fun theme that attracts people. Something that they don't think about when they think of essential oils. Make it fun. That's going to help you find people. Okay, set goals. So one of the things that you need to do is set realistic goals. How many people do you want to get to the class? How long do you want the class to go? How many signups with the premium starter kit do you want to get at the end of the class? What goals would you like to see? This is going to help you at the end of the class to determine if it was a successful event or not. So set realistic goals, but also challenge and stretch yourself, okay? Involve others. So if you know you're going to host a class and you're going to do cooking with oils and you have a product user or a business builder on your team, you have a good friend that you know, whoever it may be that cooks, <clears throat> maybe you want to involve them. This might be a great way to get them involved. Send them a quick text message, give them a call, and ask them, hey, would you mind helping me? Would you mind being involved in this cooking event? Do you have any recipes? Whatever it may be. Get other people involved. You are still the host. You are still educating and teaching on the class, but yet you're getting others involved, which is going to help create excitement. And then finally, remember to have fun. So many times I have shown up to a class or a presentation, and the host or the presenter seems very stressed. They're running around. They're getting things in order. They're making sure everything's in a perfect spot. And it just seems very overwhelming. It makes me want to never teach a class, to never host a class, because I don't want to deal with the stress that they're dealing with. So remember, get everything done ahead of time, which is why this plan is going to help you. Get everything done so that way once your presentation or class starts, you're ready to go. Be there, have fun, interact. So that way people, when they see you in their mind, they can automatically think, wow, I can host a party as well. And it doesn't seem that hard. It doesn't seem super stressful. I can fit it in in my busy schedule. These are things that we want people to realize, and preparation is key to help with that. Okay. So the next thing that you need to do is really spend some time on the content. What is it you're going to discuss? Okay. So create an outline for the content. So if you're talking about the premium starter kit, create an outline. You know, a lot of people like to say, 
this is Young Living, and here's what we do. This is essential rewards. This is seed to seal. Here's the oils. Whatever it may be, create your outline so you know what you're going to discuss. If it's about cooking, create your outline. If it's about DIY stuff, create your outline. Have an outline for what it is that you're going to teach at this class, okay? Keep it simple. Remember, not everyone is on the same level as far as knowledge goes with the product. Keep it basic. You want to make sure that you are teaching to the lowest common denominator, right? So the person in the group that knows the least amount about oils is the person that you should be teaching to. And you want to keep it simple as well to help encourage questions. This is going to get people interacting, it's going to get people having more fun, and they're going to be much more involved. Now, become the expert. This is so important. So whatever you outline for your content, whatever you outline to teach for this event, you need to be the expert. Okay, that doesn't mean you need to know all the answers and you need to hold off on hosting a party until you absolutely know everything. But be confident in what you do know and when you teach that, come across as confident and come across as the expert. So if you're talking about seed to seal, you need to make sure you know the five steps that are in that process. If you're talking about the vitality oils, you need to know that the oil is the exact same. It's a label difference, right? You need to know why we had to do that. What makes the Vitality line different? We need to know recipes. Whatever your content is for the evening or the class that you're teaching, you need to know and be the expert on that, okay? So create handouts, a presentation, or some type of visual. If you're doing a presentation for a big group of people, you know, or a class for a big group of people, sometimes a PowerPoint presentation is best. If it's just a small at-home party, handouts work perfectly where every person that comes, they can basically get a handout with a summary of what you discussed. Now, this visual could also just be your outline. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it gives them something to hold on to, something to follow along with during the event, but also something to take home with them. So make sure this has your contact information on it. Also, I would put a link to your enrollment page so you can go into your virtual office and click on link builder it will give you a link that when they type in that link it's basically going to take them to the enrollment page and it will default with your member number this is great so many times we forget to put our contact information on these flyers because we think oh it's just my friends they know how to get a hold of me well let's say your friend takes that flyer home she sits it on the counter her friend comes over and sees it and she's now interested. Well, your friend says, yeah, just go ahead and take it. Well, now she has your contact information. Every piece of information you create needs to have a way for people to contact you, okay? Examples. This is huge to a successful presentation, class, or party. Have examples. So if you're talking about the vitality oils and cooking with them, give examples of what you've cooked. Give examples of how to use the oils. Give examples of which ones you like, which ones you don't like. Give specific examples. If you're doing a DIY, give examples, okay? And finally, include in your outline a time for them to have a hands-on experience with the oils. So what can they do to have the oils in their hand? <clears throat> Excuse me. So if they're learning about the starter kit, get them smelling the oils. Get them touching the oils. Get them tasting the oils. Get the oils in their hands. As they experience the oils themselves, they're going to be much more interested in what you're saying and much more engaged in the class. Okay. Now that we've talked about content, the next thing is how do I get attendance to my event? How do I get people to show up, be engaged, and interested? First off, invite a small number of people, three to five, five to ten, whatever it may be. Start small. Don't think you have to have 30 people at your house or at your meeting. Start small. Find a small group of people. Invite them. <clears throat> also, use social media. Promote your class to your team on social media. Let them know. Talk to friends and family about it. Tell everyone you see, hey, I'm doing this event. I'm doing this class. I'd love for you to come. And the other thing that a lot of times I think we forget is ask for help. So let people know that you're trying to get better. You're trying to become a better teacher. You're trying to grow your business. You want to become a better host, and you would appreciate them being involved. 
them coming to help you out, letting them know, hey, no pressure. I would love for you just to show up, help me out so I can get better at growing my business. This is going to help you get people there, and as they start to experience the oils, it's going to be great for your business. They may have just came to help you out, but now they're learning about something that actually will help them in their lives as well, and it's going to help. So a couple creative ideas to find people. This is where it gets hard, and a lot of times you're like, okay, well, how do I find people? How do I get people to come to these events? One of the things that we do on my team is we do DIY invitations, okay? So we may make a bug spray or a chapstick or whatever it may be, and we put a label on that, and the label has all the details about the event, and we let people know that way. So we give them something that they're using. It allows them to use the product and start using it right away and it's an easy reminder. So if they have a chapstick that they're using every day, every day that they use that chapstick, guess what? They're seeing, hey, Thursday night at 7 o'clock I have this class. It's a great reminder. This has helped my team so much to find people and get attendance in our events. Okay, Contest and scavenger hunts. This is another one that people like. I have seen this work great with many different groups. So do a scavenger hunt. Hide different oils around your venue, so your house, the hotel, wherever you're doing the event. Give them clues. Get them going. So this is another creative way to let them know we're going to be playing games and doing all kinds of different things. This is going to really bring people in. Use your kids, grandkids to help you. So I have several people on my team, and what they do is they actually send their kid to school with a think stick, for instance. So basically, it is a carrier stick with peppermint oil and different things, and they give them to the different kids in their class to help them focus. Or they give them a little tube that they can use for bug repellent. Just random little gifts that they bring to school for their kids. They don't tell them anything. They don't do anything, but basically their kid or grandkid takes it into their class. They give it to everyone as a gift. They use it as a show-and-tell opportunity. Most of us have kids or family members that love the product, so it's very natural for them to do. They go in and they start talking about something that they made with their family. They start talking about why they liked it, and they share it with their class. Well, guess what? That class member then goes home, and the parent sees your contact information. You now have more leads and people contacting you. This seems like a crazy idea, but it really does work. Okay, a traveling diffuser. So again, using your kids or grandkids, take a diffuser to the teacher break room. Have a sign-up sheet and say, hey, take this diffuser home for a week. Try it out. See how you like it. Write down your information. You collect the teacher's name and number. You give that teacher a call and you say, hey, talk to me about your house. What could you use oils for, whatever it may be. Then you help them to know what oils work for that diffuser and you let them try it for a week. At the end of that week, you now have potentials. These people have tried and used the oils, invite them to classes, okay? Talking to everyone, guys. This is like a no-brainer, but you have to do it. Talk to everyone. Everyone you see, let them know. People that you may think aren't interested might surprise you. Talk to everyone. Community sign-up sheets. So a lot of times you can go to like your community center, your local library, different places, and you can advertise your event. You create a sign-up sheet, it promotes what you're doing, and people sign up if they're interested. The key with this is follow-up. Make sure you call them, follow up with them, remind them to get them there. And finally, meetup.com. This is a great website where you can actually go on and create a meetup group. So you can create a group where like-minded people will join, and they come to your event. Check this out. This is a great way to get people that you don't already know in your immediate circle to meet up. This is one that you'd want to do in a public location because it is with people that you don't know and also people are going to be much more willing to go if it is in a public location. But find a place like a Starbucks or a coffee shop or wherever it may be, set up a meetup and get three to four people there. It's a great way to find new people. Okay. <clears throat> Once you've done these things, remember duplication. Once you've mastered hosting a successful class or party, it needs to become duplicatable. People need to be able to duplicate it, okay? 
Your team needs to see that it's easy and it's something that they can do. Again, if you walk into a class or a presentation and the presenter is extremely stressed, overwhelmed, whatever it may be, that's not something that I want to duplicate. Teach it, create it, and make it simple. Okay? So, create a one-page document with the how-tos. A couple bulleted items on how to host a party, how to host a successful one, how to create a plan or a training presentation. Keep it simple. I would make it less than 10 steps so they know, okay, I just do this, 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 and this. And then also be a support for them. Let them know that you're going to be there with them. So they host the party, you're going to help them. Tag team it and make it simple. Remember, everything that we do in this industry is about duplication. So teach how this class can be duplicated, and that's going to help you be a success. Okay, getting others to host. What are some things that you can do to get others to host parties? Again, simplicity. If people see that it's simple, they're going to be more likely to host. If you let them know it's not that big of a deal, you don't have to do a lot of things, come to my class and see how simple it is, and then host a party. Keep it simple, guys. This will help. Incentivize them. So I tell people, hey, if you get five people there, I'm going to give you a lemon oil. If you get ten people there, I'm going to give you a lemon and a lavender oil. Incentivize them to host a party. And then, you know, that's going to help. This is also a great way to say, hey, invite your friends, check it out. And then let's say three to five people at your class are interested in signing up. Will you then look to your host and say, hey, let's go ahead and get you signed up. You buy the kit. We then sign these people up under you, and you've now made a good amount of money. This is the way to start training and building people and to get people to host. Keep it simple a small incentive, this will help you get others to host, okay? Motivate them. Keep them motivated and excited. Let them know that the product is easy to use, that they'll be able to use it. It's going to help them to teach their friends as well how to use the product. So many times people don't want to host a party because they don't want you to come in and be this crazy salesperson. Let them know that the whole reason of this class is to support and motivate them to use the product, to educate people how to use the product, and that's it. There's nothing else. That is your goal. Okay? And again, like I said, stress-free party planning. Let them know it's super simple. Stress-free. It fits into their busy schedule. Okay, so my invitation to everyone is start today. Start fresh. It doesn't matter if you've done 100 classes in the past or if you've never done them. Start today. Schedule your first event and become the best host that you can be. Once you've become the best host, start some of these other ideas. Start inviting others to do the same thing. Let me know if you have any questions. And again, keep it simple. Love what you do and let others see that. Have a great week.